Hey guys, it's Scott here and welcome to a FIFA 18 video. I'm so hyped to be bringing this to you. Hopefully you do enjoy it. If you do, hit that thumbs up button down below. We're going to be talking about everything that they showed off at the Foot Live event that happened yesterday. And uh, let me very quickly run through all of what I'm going to cover today. I'm hoping to give you enough detail on every little thing uh, that you understand it completely and everything new that's been added to the game, everything that's been altered. But if you do have any questions, put them in the comment section and I'll do my best to respond to them. So, we are going to be covering today the new pack opening animation and how it works. We've uh, got a little bit of gameplay that they showed off, which we'll talk about. We've got icons, new icons and how they work in the game, how you're going to be able to acquire them. We've got SBCs and the changes to those. We've got uh, changes to the web app and the companion app. We've also got objectives added to the game, which is a new sort of foot uh, game mode feature. We've got ones to watch, a couple of those were announced. We've got some new kits. We've got the Foot Champions channel, which is a new feature. And the last big new feature is Squad Battles. I'll also be talking at the end a little bit about the emissions, uh, the things that they didn't really talk about or show off. Uh, but let's start things off and sort of detail what exactly went down yesterday. Like I say, any questions, put them in the comments. But let's get into it. Let's start off with what the live stream was. So it was called Foot Live. It was hosted by a couple of people from the uh, Ultimate Team or FIFA community. So you've got Spencer, you've got the Maverick Wolves, and you've also got Castro. So they started off by opening a couple of packs. Uh, obviously, that's the thing that a lot of people are hyped for. So let me show you, to start things off, the pack opening animation for walkouts for FIFA 18. So I'm going to show you, I think, six packs here. And let's get into it. So this is taken straight from their stream. Uh, these are FIFA 17 ratings, I should point that out. But you can see instantly that it has changed completely. You get these massive billboard uh, things dropping down at the side, animated electronic boards showing the uh, the country, then the position and the rating. And uh, you can see we've got Thomas Muller right there coming out doing a signature celebration. Uh, next one, uh, we've got an inform right here. You've got English, again it shows then the position, then the club. Delhi Ali walks out and obviously these are new walkout celebrations and you get signature walkouts for select players so maybe for high rated players and informs Delhi Ali coming out and doing his uh, signature little wave right there uh, that we've seen do many times now one thing that has to be said is you can probably take note of in the background the differences in between uh, like for example you get more fireworks on Griezmann right there than you did with Delhi Ali because he's a higher rated maybe he comes out does his hotline bling of course and uh, yeah so what are your thoughts on one the card design which has really grown on me I don't I'm still not a massive fan of the icon card design but I think it works a lot better especially for informs it looks beautiful um, but this doesn't look that bad either and then obviously we couldn't miss out on having the main man their marketing ploy this year of Cristiano Ronaldo uh, next we'll go on to another one here's another inform from the stream and again maybe you can take note from the flares and everything to see if you can tell what kind of player you're gonna get I don't know if we can tell that just from what we've seen so far but again yeah what are your thoughts on the card sign and do you think that it's a bit over the top with all the fireworks and everything I love that celebration from Isco just running around the billboards um, but yeah, some of the people in the stream yesterday were thinking that it's a bit too much. Some people saying that they really liked it. I personally, I'm a fan. Uh, I think it's quite cool. Like, if you get an awesome player, there should be a lot going on and it should be a celebration. Uh, especially if it is like a big walkout or something. So the reason why it was basically just Real Madrid players here is because they then went and played some games against, uh, with Asensio and with Isco. Uh, but that is that for the pack opening section. What are your thoughts? Let's move on. So let's move on to one of the big things in FIFA 18. This is icons, obviously replacing legends from the past few FIFAs. By the way, if you want to see my full live reactions to the full rebroadcast of that EA Foot Live event, I did stream it yesterday on my channel, so you can go there and check that out if you want everything as I saw it. But this is just a watered-down version trying to summarise everything. So, icons in Foot 18. How are they going to work and what icons have we got announced? So, you can see one main man right here. I am hyped. Uh, but they've changed it from how Legends works with just one single card of like a 95 rated Pele to icon stories. So let's get into this and I'll try and briefly explain it all. So for example, Ronaldo R9 Nazario, absolute beast of a player. They've now got three versions of him in the game. And these are based on three different times in his career. So you've got the 94 Ronaldo, which is um, 1994 Ronaldo, which is a 90 rated. You've got a 94 rated Ronaldo from 2002. Then you've got the prime icon, 
which is 96 Ronaldo, okay? And when you play with these in-game, they're gonna look like that version of the card, so you're gonna see a difference in-game in like facial structure and hair between the 94 Ronaldo uh, right here where he did actually have hair, compared to that haircut right there from the World Cup 2002, you're gonna be able to see that. And I'll get into how you get these different versions of the cards in a minute, but let's very quickly go through. I'm one gonna ask you, who are you most excited for uh, to, uh, uh, to use this year. Mine is obviously the main man himself. I wasn't excited about any icons that had been announced. This is the guy. My favourite player of all time. I absolutely love him. Uh, he's, he's just the best for me. Uh, so Ronaldinho, uh, another example of how it works. You've got a 91 rated cam from uh, his PSG days, uh, an 89 rated cam from like Milan days later in his career, and then prime Ronaldinho is the 94 left wing from Barca. So this is how it's going to work. The, the main one is the prime icon. And again, I'll get to how that works in a second. We'll just very quickly scroll through all of these. So you've got a 97 prime Maradona. Obviously, you can pause and just look at their stats if you want to. People were worried about 90 left wing Henri. His prime card from Arsenal is 93 striker. You've got Yashin going up to a 94. Pele to a 98. My goodness. Uh, Rude Hullet back in Hullet gang with his 90 rated card, but then his prime is a 93. Carlos and 91, JJ Okocha and 90, Patrick Vieira up to the Hullet Gang as a 91, Peter Schmeichel as a 92. Carlos Puyol is an interesting one, his prime card is a 92 rated centre back, but he does have an 86 rated right back card with arguably potentially better stats, so it's going to be interesting to see which one people prefer to use. Del Piero 92. Uh, Michael Owen, 91. Deco, one of the least exciting ones so far. 90 rated prime card, still looks bang average to me. Um, Rio Ferdinand, 90 rated. So they've said that they're going to reveal more icons uh, as we get closer and closer to release. So they're just going to keep revealing more and more. Most likely a lot of them are going to be re-released legends as icons, like a lot of these. Uh, but do you think they're going to add anyone new to the game? If so, let me know in the comments. Now, to answer a couple more questions about these, Let's go to here. All icons will have three versions. So, how does it work? Two of them will be in packs from launch. The two lower rated ones. So 91 and 89 Ronaldinho will be in packs throughout the entire year. Now they're introducing a thing called Throwback Thursdays. So random Thursdays throughout the year, they're going to launch a prime icon card. So this will be available specific time during the season. So the 94 Ronaldinho, for example. The Prime Icon version represents players when they're at their best will be available through SBCs and limited time packs. So maybe it's like a 100k pack with a limited chance of getting a Prime Icon player. We'll have to wait and see. But you can also get it by completing the SBC. So you can see right here to get the 96 Ronaldo, you need to do four different things, including uh, setting up an Icon player. So let's very quickly give you a glimpse of that. Here is them submitting the 90 rated Prime Ronaldo to uh, get the 90, uh, 90 rated Icon Ronaldo to get the 96 rated Prime Ronaldo Icon card, which is just amazing right there. So that is that for Icons. Hopefully that's everything explained. Let's move on to, whilst we're talking about it, SBCs and other gameplay features. So here we can see that EA are pushing that there are now more ways to play Ultimate Team than ever before, more ways to earn rewards and get those coins to build your squad up from nothing. So let's very quickly gloss over these and then we'll go into each one in more depth. We've got Objectives, which is an extension of Manager Tasks, something that I've been saying should be added to the game, my number one addition that I would add. I've been saying this for years now, finally it's here. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Changes to the SBCs. Confirmation that we are going to get returning player SBCs, league SBCs, and special SBCs such as like flash ones, foot champions, footmers, etc, etc. We're going to get those kind of things returning again. But player and league are definitely coming back. Uh, you've got the foot champions channel, and you've also got more custom kits than ever before. So let's very quickly go through these one by one. The first is new features in SBCs. The main one is brick slots. So one or more slots could be locked to a specific club and league, which means more variety in challenges. So, you know how before we had the locked positions, so you couldn't put a player in there? They still exist, but also you've got these brick slots. So in this example right here, this is for uh, the Prime Ronaldo SBC. They have to submit an icon player right here, which you can see on the left-hand side, you still see all your requirements. You've now got brick slots. 
So, for example, this one right here, uh, I know it's a little bit blurry, but they haven't released massive, like, HD images of this stuff yet. You've got just a Real Madrid player. You don't have to go out and buy that player. It's locked in as if you had gone and bought them and put them in that squad. It basically, it limits you to how you can build your squad around them now, rather than just being able to, like, chuck them in goal and then build the rest of the squad around requirements that don't even exist, right? You just chuck the one requirement in goal doesn't matter. Now you're forced to build around these. So for example, they've got a Real Madrid player in here and they've linked Casemiro to them. Uh, another one right here, you've got a Spanish MLS player uh, that has to be linked to. So you've got, is that Josie Altador on the right as well as Ronaldo both getting links to that. Um, so there's a couple of other things as well. Uh, they've now been able to join requirements together. So you know before it was like a Spanish player and a Real Madrid player. Um, now it will say Spain players from Real Madrid. So remember before you'd have those kind of things as separate. Now they're one requirement. So it means there's going to be even more variety in the challenges because they can link multiple uh, dual requirements now, which is going to be pretty crazy. So for example, this one, Spain players from Real Madrid 2, USA players from the MLS 2. So before that would be four separate requirements. Now it makes it a little bit more simpler to understand. Also, it says minimum two here. Now, in the past, a lot of people got confused. For example, if it said rare players minimum seven, a lot of people would count up their players and think, I swear I've got enough rare players. Now it will tell you how many you've got. So if you've only put in three out of seven, it will tell you three of seven. So you actually understand where you're going wrong and what you need to change because you'll see that number go up or down depending on who you put in, which I think is quite nice uh, for people that did get confused and would just change things until they saw the green tick. So now you have a more uh, understandable idea of where you're at. A couple of other things that they've added. Uh, if you go to the squad builder by pressing Y or triangle, then it will show you the squad builder requirements whilst you also see the squad builder as well, which is pretty nice. A couple of other things. You can clear your squad if you press in the right thumbstick. So before you would have to remove each player one by one. Now, if you're just like, you know what, let me start again. Boom, clear squad, easy as you like. And you can also view the rewards on the left by clicking in the left stick, um, which is pretty nice as well. Uh, so that is SBC's a lot of additions there and a lot of changes, which are pretty cool to make it even better this year. I think SBC's are going to be bigger and better than they were before. Next. You've got a redesigned web app and companion app. So the web app is something that has not changed in years and it's so outdated and it just looks terrible. The companion app is a little bit more up to date, a little bit more like the game itself. But look at the web app, man. Let me just pause this GIF right here. So you've got your companion app here on your phone, on your tablet, but this is the new look web app, which is amazing. Finally, it doesn't look stupid. It looks a lot more like the actual game. And you can also now complete SBCs on the web app, finally, which is amazing. So that's really, really good. I'm really, really pleased. Like some people probably won't care about it, but it's just the little things. Like if, if you don't want to turn on your console uh, or maybe you're just on your laptop, you want to think, oh, let me just do this. Go on the web app. It's just like, it's not a good experience right now. So hopefully this redesigned uh, web app is going to be a lot better and I am personally happy about that and uh, the first comment in response is I'm not going to show it because of the profanity but um, about time is pretty much what it says. Uh, let's keep going then. So objectives. This is something like I say whoops uh, that I've wanted in FIFA for years. I have been saying this is my number one most wanted thing in the game. Uh, in like COD and other games you've got challenges uh, that you can complete every day and every week and you get bonuses and rewards from them. They finally added it to FIFA. So, uh, you've got your starter objectives, which are pretty much like your manager tasks. This is an expansion of that. So now you've got daily and weekly tasks at home or on the go. You can also do these on the web app and companion app as well. Obviously, some of them you won't be able to because, for example, this one, keep five clean sheets. You can't do that on the web app. Uh, but so, you've got daily objectives. Uh, obviously, these come out every single day. These are going to be different for every single player, okay? So, let's say one of my daily objectives is play three games. That may not be one of yours. You may have one which is buy five cards off of the marketplace. I won't have that. So, they're going to be completely random. 
whereas the weekly objectives are going to be the same for everybody. So everyone in this example is going to have to play 20 matches, keep 5 clean sheets, score 10 headers and score 25 goals. And for each of these you get a reward. Now we don't know whether there's going to be a group reward um, or whether you just get a reward for each thing. So let's say if you completed just the 20 matches but you didn't do any of the other things, will we get a reward just for that? Um, maybe. It looks like that from the starter objectives uh, you do still get a reward from completing each one, uh, but then we do not know, as you can see, objectives complete 0 out of 4, uh, there's a time limit obviously as well, whether we get a complete reward like in SBCs, we'll have to wait and see, but I'm excited for this to be in the game, I'm really really happy, this, as I say, is something I've wanted for years, so well done EA for finally adding this. Next. We've got our first five confirmed one to watch players in Ultimate Team for this year. So this is something new as well. Lone players can be one to watch. In the past, that was not a thing. So we've got Lukaku, we've got Lacazette, James Rodriguez, Bonucci, and Douglas Costa at Juventus. Um, so pretty cool, right? Which of these five players would you buy thinking they are going to get the most in forms is my next question for you. I know I've asked a lot, I apologise, but this is fun, right? Getting interaction with you guys, this is what videos are about. Which one would you buy? I personally think Lukaku will probably get more in forms than Lacazette. People will probably refer back to this video in about 10 months time saying, you're an idiot, look how many in forms Lacazette got. If so, fair enough, I would choose Romelu but these are probably going to be super expensive. And they will obviously be confirming more one to watch as we get closer to the game coming out and with release. Next, uh, we have got, again, more custom kits than ever before. This is the one to watch kit. I personally don't care about this. I know a lot of people do like the kits that we get from SBCs and through playing the game and stuff like that. I don't really care because it seems that whenever you try to wear one of these kits, people just back out against you. So unless that has changed in some way, um, it doesn't really interest me, but I assume quite a few of you guys will be excited to see even more custom kits. I see a lot of people wearing them, so good for you guys. Next we have got, uh, this is the final thing for this bit as well, the Foot Champions Channel. So you can watch full match replays from the top players in the world competing in the Weekend League. Now there is a video that goes along with this which should uh, hopefully explain this a little bit more. Yeah, so this, this is a feature so, um, they will choose, um, you can go to the replays here and you've got featured and then you've got the top 100 leaderboard which uh, is pretty nice. So, for example right here they've just chosen because they were hosting the event, a game between Castro and Spencer. And uh, you can show the result and stuff on the right hand side and see the stats and everything and that's pretty cool. You can see their record for the weekend league as well. But you can also load a full replay of the game. So they're going to focus this on pro players, they really want to get it so you, you know these guys names, you know their faces, you know what sort of play style they have and stuff like that. So what you can do is you can go to the Foot Champions channel and you will be able to watch these full replays. And I personally love the overlay that they've got for this. I like the on-pitch graphics of the uh, score and everything there as well. Uh, but like this overlay that they've got at the bottom, which we'll see in a second, you can see where everything happens. So the goals, yellow cards, red cards, etc. Uh, you've got full control over this as well. So if you prefer playing from uh, a different camera angle to what is the default in this game, you can change it to that. So maybe you can try and learn things from these pro players by watching from your preferred angle. You can change the speed of everything. It's like a full instant replay of the full game. So what are your thoughts on that? Do you think that you're going to use it or not? I personally think I might do um, if I see someone that I know is great at the game and I'm like, I want to learn a little bit from them and uh, that will be a good way to improve and try and get better at the game. So that is the gameplay stuff added. There is one more big feature which we're going to end uh, by looking at right now. So let's move on to squad battles. So here it is. This is squad battles and to summarize it very very quickly I would say it's basically offline foot champs. Okay, uh, you can see right here compete and earn rewards in the all new single player mode, challenge real squads and rank in leaderboards. Uh, I'll get into how it works in just a second. Uh, you can also play against featured squads uh, made by, these are squads that are actually made by people like 
YouTubers, streamers, actual footballers, pro FIFA players and celebrities, which is pretty cool. So how does it all work? As I say, it's pretty much an offline version of Foot Champs. Now, if you have played the Weekend League in Foot Champions, you will know that it's based on wins. If you get more wins, then you get better rewards, going from bronze, silver, gold to elite and top 100. The more wins out of the 40 games you play, the better rewards you get. This seems to be similar, but we don't know right now how many games there are, what time period you have to play the games, whether it's like during the week, um, and whether you only are allowed to play 10 games, or whether it's unlimited. We have no idea. But what we do know is how it works. So right here you can see on the screen, this is choosing your opponent. You've got four tabs, featured squad, opponent select, your rank, and top 100. And you can also see at the top right how many points you've got this week and how long left you've got to play your games. So the way that it works, uh, the featured squad is what I showed you from that Castro one before, that's just made by someone from the community or a pro or someone famous, etc. And that's the featured one that you can play against. But the main part is opponent select. So here you can choose which squads, these are all made by people in the game, so it could be my squad, it could be your squad that's randomly available to play against here. And they vary in rating, chemistry, um, and uh, difficulty like that. So the way that it works is you choose which team you want to play against uh, and then what you do is you choose your difficulty. So for example we've gone onto one here and you can play it against amateur. If you beat it on amateur uh, it will tell you how many points you can get. So possible match points 555. Uh, and then it will tell you the difficulty breakdown and how that changes per difficulty level. So maybe you think you're better than amateur. Maybe you think you're amazing at this game. You can beat it on ultimate. You can potentially get nearly two and a half thousand points and everything on the difficulty breakdown is maxed out. So it's going to be a lot harder to earn your points. But what do these points go towards? As I said before, weekly rewards. So you've got uh, your featured right here, but again at, at the top you can see you've got your rank and the top 100. So if we go back to the tweets, you can see that we have got different rewards. So right here, it, they haven't decided, it seems, as of yet, how many points are required to get each ranking of reward, and they haven't actually chosen the rewards either, because on the website and on the stream and on this tweet, everything is completely different. On one of them, for this one, Gold 1, you get a Premium Gold Players Pack, a Jumbo Premium Gold Pack, and 5,000 coins. On another one, you got a Gold Player Pack, a Silver Player Pack, Giroud, I'm not even joking, if you follow my channel you know how ridiculous that is that of course it was him, and 500 coins. So they haven't fully decided that. But you can see, the more points that you earn, the better rewards you're going to get. So again, we don't know whether there's a set amount of games, or um, just a time limit in which you can earn your points, because if there's just a time limit, then you just play a load of games, even if they're on like amateur, and you'd work your way up the rewards. So you'd assume there's a limit of games, but we'll learn more about this as time goes on and they reveal more information. So again, it's going to be bronze, silver, gold, elite, and then you've got top 100 here as well. And you're going to get better rewards for how good you do. It's as simple as that. So an offline version of Foot Champs where you play against random squads that are created by people that play the game. Uh, the more difficult the team is that you play against, the more points available. And then the higher difficulty you play on the more points are available. You want to get as many points as possible to get the highest rank possible and earn those rewards. So that is that pretty much for everything that was covered in the Foot Live event. If you've got any questions again, please put them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer everything. A couple of omissions, things that they didn't talk about. Now they did play the game uh, and they showed us a game of FIFA with Isco and Asensio. Okay, that was cool that they were there, but they didn't really show off any of the new gameplay features, but this was focused on Ultimate Team, so you can understand all it was was showcasing that they could get some Real Madrid players involved. Now, they also didn't talk about the draft, they didn't talk about foot seasons, or tournaments potentially making a return. There's someone that I follow on Twitter that this year was really just annoyed because they weren't good enough for foot champs or they didn't have the time to play it. Seasons wasn't great. They wanted the return of normal tournaments. So we don't know if that's going to be a thing or not. Again, they haven't talked about rewards for seasons because they need to be improved. They need to improve rewards for the draft as well. But they didn't talk about that. So we are just praying that they are going to listen to the community like they have for pretty much all of this 
and throughout this year in the improvements that they've made that they are going to make those better and we just have to wait and have faith in EA which I know is difficult at times but we have to do it so they didn't talk about those unfortunately they didn't talk about any changes to um, like searching on the transfer market in terms of can you search for a specific version of a card especially with the icons having three versions of a card will you be able to search for one specific one they didn't say anything um, and anything else that you may be thinking of that I haven't talked about clearly they haven't mentioned so if you want to ask me about it go ahead but I think that is going to be it to wrap up everything that we've shown here today so to summarize the new pack opening animation looks interesting um, we've got icons and how they work in the game. Ronaldinho is in the game. You've got new uh, ways that SBC works and new little features that make those even better. You've got new web app and companion apps, which is amazing. You've got objectives and extension of manager tasks, which is really, really good. Even more ways to earn rewards. You've got a uh, new one to watch that they've announced, new kits. The Foot Champions channel to watch the pros play and try and learn from them. And you've got squad battles. So hopefully you have found this informative. If you have, hit the thumbs up. If you're new to the channel and want to see daily FIFA streams, I will be streaming at 5 o'clock today. You can subscribe as well. And I will see you guys later. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.